Praise the Lord, Pastor James C. Ilum Jr. here at Dunamis Christian Center. I'm so honored and I'm so blessed that you are tuning in today to get the word of God. Listen, God is so good and his mercy endures forever. I don't know what you're dealing with, what you're going through. Something good is about to happen to you because God is full of compassion. The word of God today, I pray that it will bless you. Watch this. Jimmy what? Jimmy Elam? Oh, let me see your name. Did you have another name? Cause, did you have a Miller name with that or something? Cause, but I went to church. I went to Dudamus. I, I went to church every Sunday. You know you're lying. <laughs> I did everything right. During the pandemic, I watched every show on Zoom, on Facebook. I didn't miss a Sunday. I tried it every week in the pandemic. Oh, Lord, if that's the case, just shut it down. We're going on with that. No, I'm telling you, when you stand before God, you know what they're going to look at? Not anything you've done, anything you can do, not anything you've accomplished. The only thing he's going to look and see is your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. The only way your name can get there is that you believe on Jesus, confess him as your Lord, so he can take the place of what Adam and Eve did. did. Sin came upon the earth, and your nature now, you're born in, as a, into a sin nature, not by what you've done. It's by being born. Adam and Eve sin. Everybody in the world now comes in the world with a sin nature. And so it has to change to go be with God. That's why the gospel is so very important to preach it so we can believe on it because preaching condemnation is not going to scare people into the kingdom. If I come up here yesterday, you're going to hell by 12 o'clock. If you don't get saved, get saved or you're going to hell by 12 o'clock. Well, this day, they, they made different these days. You know what they said? Well, people ain't scared of hell. <laughs> people say, you're going to hell by 12 o'clock. You know they're going to say, well, Lord, Lord, let's go to the mall. Get, get, let's, go, let's, go, let's go and get, if we're going to hell, we might as well just enjoy ourselves before 12. That, that's the generation we live in. People ain't scared of hell. But I tell you what, don't, one day we're going to stand before God. And just because you don't believe doesn't mean it's not so. So you got to make a decision, wait a minute, I believe on Jesus. I'm, I'm going to make a decision to believe on Jesus, not Buddha, not Muhammad. Somebody say, all those religions, what makes yours perfect? Because Christianity is not a religion. It's a personal relationship with Jesus. I'm not a religion. Christianity is a personal relationship with Jesus. I believe on Jesus, and I have a personal trust in him, and he forgives me, and he justifies me, and he gives me the work of salvation as a finished work. I believe on Jesus. But see, when we get that, then your salvation is secure. Even in your imperfection, you'll go be with him. Because I said this, and people got upset on the internet and started calling me names. Mm. But you don't go to hell for sinning. Come on, Pastor. Mm -hmm. If so, we're all going to be there partying one day. <laughs> Why? Because... You go to hell for rejecting Jesus, the only avenue to heaven. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody come to the Father but my me, Jesus said. So you don't go to hell for sin. I'm not saying sin is wrong. No, wages of sin is death. See, but here's what I'm saying. Before you get saved, yes, you will go to hell for sinning because you are a sinner. But after you get saved, no, not now, because why? I'm righteous. And so he said, doubt is sin. And, and so he says, he didn't know to do good and don't do it. To him it's sin. 
Not just the Big Ten. You go to hell one day for rejecting Jesus. Somebody take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> that's scripture, though. That's, that's, that's what the Bible says. Now, you got your own religion. Now, all this stuff out here, they don't, everybody don't talk like that. Because some people say, you know, you do this, that's sin. You, you know, you, you know you, you, every time you backslide. You ever hear that? Yeah, he, he's in the backslidden stage. Is that the case? Everybody in here backslidden. Because when you got saved, you were not, you have done something that, that's not lined up to the word. That's why you need Jesus. Amen. Because everybody here, some of y'all ain't did the big 10, but you're rolling your eyes at me right now. <laughs> that sin. Some of you will never make a, do adultery, but yet you're talking about and slandering people. Some of you won't do the big 10, you won't covet. but you're unfaithful to your mate. You're unfaithful to your church. Come on. Come on. Somebody said, the church too? Mm-hmm. Because when you came up and said, uh, Pastor, I joined the church, that means your behind belong to me. Amen. You can't tell me how to pack. I'm responsible for you. That means you're going to be committed to your church. And when you don't, you're missing it. Unless you say, I don't want to be here no more. But once you're still here, and yet you are slothful, unfaithful, don't ever do nothing. Nobody say everything, everything somebody want to do, you go the opposite. Well, no, that ain't going to work. <laughs> you sent here to torment people. No, no, no. Change that. Once we get saved, performance won't get you into heaven, but performance is good. Works, doing all you can to please God is good. I do it though because I am saved. Because he does love me. Not to do, get into heaven or get saved. I do it because it's my responsibility now until Jesus come to represent the church. It's a matter quiet in here now. Uh -huh. That's good, Pastor. That's good. Look at somebody say, if you're not feeling nothing on the inside, say that. If you're not feeling anything, <laughs> you're not saved yet. See, if I'm talking to you and you're not doing it, it's something should be like, yeah, you're right, Pastor. Not like, ain't nobody paying no attention to what Pastor's talking about. <laughs> Looking like a clown the other day. I ain't, I ain't paying no attention to him. I, ain't, I, ain't, I can do what I want to do. I can say what I want to say. I can go what I want to I come to church what I want. <laughs> you ain't saved yet. You thought you were saved. Because you can't, because your nature has not changed. Because when you hear the word, you don't want to do worse. You want to do better. Because now your nature is changed. You might not be doing it, but you want to. Man. How many people are going to stand before God, thought they were saved, and not even saved because you haven't made a decision to believe on Jesus yet? All you're doing is working in the chicken winning committee. It's cooking all the good chicken. You got the best chicken now. I'm going to eat the chicken. But then they'll get you in. I come to church every Sunday. Thank God for that, but that ain't going to get you in either. Amen. Lord, when I pray, boy, I pray. When I pray, I pray, but that can't get you in. Amen. The kingdom benefits, but you can't get in. Do you believe on Jesus? Have you accepted him as your Lord? That's the gospel. When you do, then you're saved. You're free. Who the sun sets free. Come on, say it again. Who the sun sets free. It's free. Yes. Yes, yes. 
So once you get this, nobody can't talk you out of salvation. Because what I found out is that if you don't have this, people will try to talk you out of salvation, try to judge you and tell you what they think you are, but you're not what people think you are. You, you are who God says you are. So you got to understand that everybody might be on a different level of growing, of walking. So don't let them rob you of your walk. Don't let people tell about, well, you know, if you really say you, you, you want to pray three hours, I pray five. No, I don't care if I pray one second. I'm still saved. Because I'm not saved by works. I'm saved by grace. The good news is he, if I believed on him, I get all the benefits and inheritance that anybody else got who's been saved for 50 years. I just got saved, and I'm now, I have all the benefits that anybody ever had in the gospel. Why? Because I, I believe on Jesus. Somebody said, what are you doing? I'm renewing your mind to get this, because once you get this, the devil might as well pack up. Because everything you pray come in the past. Why? Because the righteous are always delivered from trouble. I'm going to end up with this. I just feel this thing right here. Look at, look at Psalms 34 for a minute. The righteous always is always delivered. How many, how many, how many, who am I talking to? Psalms 34, and look at um, verse 15. Psalms, now we're going to, I'm going to show you a benefits, benefits of your righteousness always when you get established in righteousness. When you're established in righteousness, you understand the gospel. You're righteous by believing on Jesus. You're not righteous by your works. Somebody said this, I'm righteous by believing on Jesus. See, the Bible says you have been declared righteous. That's justification. That means before you did anything right, you got to understand I'm righteous. If not, that's why your righteousness don't work. That's why you can't change because your mindset says you're still a sinner on the inside. You still, th you still see yourself as a sinner. But once you see yourself as righteous, mm, things will begin to change. And look what he said for the, those who've done that. Verse 15, do you have it? And look what it says in Psalms 34, 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the what? The righteous. Lord, how many? Somebody said, the Lord, the Lord is looking at you. The Lord is looking. Right now. Lord, how many? And his ears are open to their cry. Lord, how many? So you, when you understand your righteousness, he's watching over you daily. And not only that, his ears are open to your cry. I mean... He ain't thinking about what the world talking about right now, somebody not righteous. He want to know what in my assignment first is to find out who righteous, who understands it, because my eyes are over them and my ears are open to what they pray for. When you cry to me, I'm listening to do whatever you need me to do. My God. Nothing else, man. I tell you, I got to serve God like that. I want to be righteous. I want to, I'm righteous before him. I thank you, God, for my righteousness that even though I'm going through like everybody else, even though I'm up against this, even though I need that done, I don't have to worry. I don't have to feel because you're watching over me. Even when I'm about to stumble, even when I'm about to go somewhere and I don't know that it's danger there, you're watching over me and already sent an angel there to protect me. My God, even though I sit there like last night and just ran in the house and forgot that I had my key in the car. Left my windows down and my key there. And Lord have mercy. One time somebody came and stole my car. But now, glory to God, once I got some sense, I thought I did it again. But Lord, you're just so good. When I went out there this morning, I know this ain't nothing to y'all, but I'm just thanking God. When I went out there this morning, my key was still in the car. Everything, nobody came. You protected me. Sometimes we left the door unlocked, but you protected me. Me locking the door and got a machete and a machine gun ain't going to stop the devil. Now, it's God watching over us every day for 24-7. That's why I'm not afraid. Don't be afraid. God is watching over you. And even if, if, 
You go through something, you thought, well, I thought God was watching me. Look, let me tell you something. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God said, I'm going to deliver you out of them all. So even if you go through something and you're in the valley and you're up against some trouble sometime, he said, don't forget, I got a promise. Many of the afflictions you're going to go through sometime, but everything you go through, I'm going to snatch you out of it. Why? Because I'm righteous. I got a righteous mindset. I'm not getting it based on my performance. I'm getting it because of what Jesus did for me. I'm righteous. And some of you, you need to break the power of the devil over your mind who's telling you when you make a mistake, you're not righteous. You need to build yourself up. Even in the midst of doing something you ain't supposed to do, you need to rise up and say, I'm the righteousness of God. What are you doing? I'm renewing my mind. And if I keep doing that, he promised to look over me. He promised to look over my family. Somebody say, I'm righteous. And look what it says now. But look here. If you not you don't want to be righteous? Here's your testimony, but I'm glad nobody here I'm talking to. The face, look at verse 16, of the Lord is against them that what? To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. See, people think they're getting away, but time is winding up. Mm. I know you've been hearing that Jesus is coming back. They've been saying that when I was a boy, but I'm telling you, he's closer. <laughs> Jesus is on the way. Jesus is coming back. Mm. And so I'm telling you right now, the right, and look at, verse, look at verse 17, the righteous cry. There it is again. And the one who got a righteous mindset, the one who understands his gospel, the one who knows that I'm righteous, not by my works. I'm righteous because of what Jesus did. I believe on him. I'm justified. I'm declared righteous. I know religion don't like that. They want you to do everything. They, they want you to do that to get saved. Be holy and, and, and you're saved. Uh, uh, uh. Get baptized and you're saved. Speak in tongues. And you're saved. No, no, no. I believe on Jesus and I'm saved. I believe on Jesus and my righteous. And he said, when I cry, the Lord's going to hear it. Now, look at these words here. Don't just read over that. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say it like that. <laughs> look what it says. Hear it. What does that mean? It, it ain't heard. Hear it. Hear it. Somebody say, hear it. No, do it like this. Hear it. That means continually. That means every day. That means every second. That means every hour. I'm going to keep on every day hearing. Lord have mercy. And delivereth them. Somebody said delivereth. <laughs> Y'all ain't doing it right. Said delivereth. <laughs> that means if I understand my righteousness, every day he's going to deliver me continually. I know he did it last year, but he's going to do it this year. I know he did it in the past but he going to do it in the future. I know God always bless me, but something good is still coming in my way because I'm righteous and he promised me. You might be going through, but I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to snatch you out of it. I'm going to bring you out of it. There's an expiration date for the thing you're going through. He never promised that he's going to keep us away from trouble. He just said one word. No weapon. That is form. He didn't say it won't be formed, but he said it won't work. No weapon formed against us going to prosper. Because I'm righteous. Look what it says here. I got, I got five minutes. That's only, I ain't got but five minutes. What, what are we doing? I don't preach that long. Five minutes left. Lord, I miss. Somebody said, it looks like you about to end it. You should have ended it right now. I know. Just hold on and get saved. 
Because if you say you want all of this, you don't want like, I'm glad it's over. No, you, you, what you going to do in heaven? 24-7, Jesus teaches. <laughs> Look here. Let's go on to verse, for the sake of time, for y'all, some of y'all want to go. Look at verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So, you're going to go through some things as righteous. Many tests, many trials. Sometimes you go through like everybody else. But here's the promise. But the Lord delivereth, there it is again, delivereth him out of them all. Anything you get in, he's promised because you understand who you are. I'm going to deliver you out of it. You're coming out of it. I'd have created a crowd right now, everybody up in here who's going through something. You're coming out of it. Yeah. I declare right now, those you watching me by way of virtue, you're coming out of it. <laughs> I declare right now, in the name of Jesus, whatever test, whatever trial, whatever situation, whatever circumstance you face, you are coming out of it. I'm declaring right now, many of the affliction, many tests, many trials, but God promised those who understand, I am the righteousness of God. I am going to bring you out of it. I don't know when, I don't know how, I don't know what he got to do, but I'm telling you, God, God knows how to bring his people out. My God, my God, God knows how to get in the fire furnace. My God, and my God, and, and keep you from, God know how to get in the lion's den if you have to. But I tell you right now, God know how to walk around the Jericho and shout and something happen. God know how to stand there and see the salvation of the Lord. He know how to open up the Red Sea. God knows knows what to do. My God, I'm preaching up in here. God knows how to deliver his people. Don't try to figure out, just keep praising him. Just keep thanking him. Just keep the decreeing and the crying. I am the righteousness of God. When you do that, things will happen. Somebody say, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. See, when you say I'm righteous, you're saying I'm free. Yeah. Every time you say I'm righteous, renew your mind. I'm free. Yeah. And who the sun sets free. Free, free indeed. Yeah. Somebody say it again. I'm free. I'm free. And who the sun sets free. Yeah. It's free indeed. It's free. Say it again. I'm free. And what? Who the sun sets free. I tell you what, uh, I'm almost famous. Oh my God, y'all, y'all ain't ready for me up in here today. Y'all ain't ready. For, give me, give me a little check one. Give me a little praise team. Come up here for something real quick. Y'all run up here. Don't be looking crazy. Just get up here right now. Hey, somebody say I'm free. Come on, one more time. Somebody say I'm free. Sometimes you need to sing it.
Man, I tell you, I hope you receive that. Uh, let's be doers of the word, not just hearers only. God's word will, um, it's our life, God. You know, no matter what you're dealing with, it's going to be okay. Thank God for you watching today. Listen, I wanted to keep encouraging you that don't forget that we're still live virtual as well. Um, 10 o'clock every Sunday um, at Dunamis Christian Center Facebook Live. And also YouTube at Dunamis Power 320. Dunamis Power 320 on YouTube. Spread the word. Hit like, hit share, so the word can continue to bless you. You got time to listen this morning at 10. Um, the word will bless you. Amen. Also, I would like to just say to anyone who's watching that um, who don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, this is the season to know Jesus. You know, he is the one that loves you without any performance, without any um, works. Uh, he loves you just where you are, and he's already died for you, and shed it, his blood so you can receive him. If there's someone who's watching today, just repeat after me, and he'll accept you um, just as you are. Say, Lord Jesus, come on and say it. Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. Come into my heart. Do something with my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that, guess what? With your heart, you are a new creature. Welcome to the family of God. Go ahead, let us know somehow so we can give you information and things that will help you in your Christian walk. We love you and God bless you. Listen, we're going to see you next week. Until we see you next week, don't forget, the power of God is able to change and rearrange things in your life for the good. God bless you and see you soon.